During Spice Wars is a real-time strategy 4X aiming to satiate the appetite of Dune fans who have been waiting for a new game for more than 20 years by now and hopefully also appeal to 4X fans in general. But I'm pretty sure not everybody watching this will be familiar with the Dune universe, so here are some basics. The game takes place in a distant future where humanity has attained faster than light travel with the help of a mysterious substance that only exists on one planet in the entire galaxy. That planet being Arrakis, also known as Dune, the desert planet. An incredibly harsh and dry planet where gigantic sandworms roam the deep deserts and gobble up anything that disturbs the tranquility of the sands. This substance, usually called spice, but also melange, isn't a type of fuel for spaceships, instead you could say it's fuel for the human mind acting as an expander of consciousness as well as a life extender. As such, this substance is the most valuable product in the entire galactic imperium because the socio-political organization of this far future is one very much reminiscent of feudalism, featuring various noble houses, an emperor, a space navigator guild and various specialized schools that can train humans to attain nigh superhuman abilities. And that should hopefully give you enough context on this for the video to make sense going further, at least somewhat. I started saying the game is a 4X and as you might have inferred by now, it takes place on Dune where you will be choosing one of four factions and fighting the others for space and spice. The factions will be House Atreides, House Harkonnen, Smugglers and the Fremen. House Atreides and House Harkonnen are two major houses of the Landsrad, the sort of administrative organization of the Imperium characterized by very opposing ways of ruling, the Atreides being more into diplomacy and manipulation and the Harkonnen more into militaristic oppression and exploitation. The smuggler faction is kind of a neutral faction being interested mainly in making as much money as possible, while the Fremen are the native inhabitants of Dune, a hardy people who have to wear special moisture reclaiming suits called steel suits in order to have a chance at surviving their harsh planet. Their collective dream and goal is to see the desert bloom with greenery. Even now, at the very starting point of the early access, the factions feel very differentiated and offer a really different type of gameplay experience and different sorts of challenges. Each of them comes with their own sort of special features and inclinations, making particular approaches and styles of play important in order to optimize your chances of success. Currently, you can pick two counselors who act as passive global buffs. Some of them offer several benefits and make for an easy setting, while others offer fewer benefits and choosing them would make for a hard setting. Each map is divided into irregular zones of control, very reminiscent of those from the now ancient Dune 2, which I need to cover soon, each of them featuring a village and possibly some special resource or other. You need to explore them first in order to reveal what they contain and only after that can you take them over. Once a new settlement is under your control, you can start improving it by placing production buildings. However, this is where we get the first aspect of the universe implemented as gameplay elements. First of all, in order to build things in your settlement, you need to have enough plascrete, because you can't just build stuff on the sheer bedrock. Then you will only ever have a limited number of buildings in your settlements, because in world these types of human settlements can only be built on bedrock. Nothing out of the ordinary just yet, but when you improve your settlement it isn't some form of abstract thing, like the settlement growing larger and getting a bigger number or something like that, no. Instead you have to place the buildings on the available grid much like you would do in Dune 2. And putting a hard cap on the number of improvements you can outfit a settlement with means that you also have to decide which of the several development aspects you want to focus on. These being intel, knowledge, influence and hegemony. With the military being separate but equally important. All of these systems are meant to support each other. However, having a clear direction will allow you to focus your efforts into supporting one of them with the rest. For instance, focusing on improving resource production and reducing upkeep costs early can free up resources for later in the game. Or choosing to focus on your military early will allow you to quickly conquer settlements. Whichever branch of development you choose to focus on, if any for that matter, will come at the expense of other more daily use resources, because you'll also need to produce water, plascrete and of course spice from those same villages. 
While you're dealing with the usual 4x decision making I've been outlining up until now, yet another Duneverse specific mechanic you have to contend with is the spice tax or tithe each faction will have to pay to some form of higher authority. This amount of spice increases every month, which means that you need to either be constantly expanding into new spice containing zones or improving the yields of the ones you already control. Both of these options require investment of further time and resources of course. Likewise, there is also a monetary currency in the game called Solari, which is tied to the spice trade, so you can constantly see the spice to Solari exchange rate. The amount of spice you sell directly affects the amount of money you make. So much like with any other 40x out there, your main job will be to balance these various systems so as to constantly expand and then eventually reach the winning condition. Another universe related mechanic is that of the lands red resolutions. Every month there will be 3 resolutions suggested to the lands red, some affecting only one faction while others will affect all of them. This is where you can use either your votes and or your influence points to nudge things into your favor or to the detriment of the other factions. Once the resolutions pass they act as global effects for the duration of the month. And these resolutions can prove to be really great boons to your faction, making the investment in influence generating buildings worthwhile in the long term. Now, the real-time aspect of the game might put some forex purists off a bit, and I can understand that, but you do get active pause as well as variable speed, so I don't think that should be that big of a consideration. When it comes to combat, it should be noted that at least for the time being, units stack and their need for supply is real. Walking through the desert depletes supply really fast and you cannot station your troops willy-nilly, they can only survive if they are at a settlement you control. Due to the hard cap on the amount of buildings each settlement can have, your number of military units also has a cap. Granted this one is a bit softer, but it makes micromanaging them during combat very important. For instance, attacking ranged enemy units with your melee units to decrease the efficiency of the ranged units is a must. Likewise, retreating them when it looks like you're losing will mean that you are protecting your investments because military units are not cheap. And of course you have to be very careful with the worm signs. There is also an entire layer of the game focused on infiltrating the various factions with agents, preparing special covert ops which you can then use as temporary effects on specified zones, as well as using them to explore random things in the desert. That last part's gonna make sense when you play the game. Dune Spice Wars' visual aesthetic seems to be mainly inspired by the most recent big screen adaptation of Frank Herbert's book series, the 2021 Dune movie directed by Denis Villeneuve which makes a fair bit of sensing as how the game is being launched in the wake of that movie's release. However, that being said, one important visual aspect that I cannot overlook is the design of the sandworms. Remember at the beginning when I said that Dune is inhabited by ginormous sandworms who eat anything that disturbs the sand? Well, they are both an iconic and story crucial part of the book series, so you cannot ignore them in any Dune related uh, anything really. And when it comes to the sandworms in Dune Spice Wars, it seems to me that the influence came from David Lynch's Dune film from 1984, featuring the three-sided mouth. And by the way, I have an entire video about David Lynch's Dune, if you're so inclined to check it out, it's gonna be in the description. And while I'm talking about model design, I want to point out how much the wind traps look like the wind trap from Dune 2000. Which I also have to cover one of these days. Hmm. Ok, now let's talk about some real world considerations. The game just went into early access and considering it's being developed by Shiro Games who also did Northgard, which I also covered during its early access, we need to expect lots of other features and balancing to happen as time goes on. I think the game will be in early access for at least a year, considering what happened with Northgard. As it is now, it's already a great experience for Dune fans, however, it might be a bit slow for 4x fans at large. The slowness makes in-world sense, but it might not click with those unfamiliar with the litany against fear. And there are plenty of things to add or that could be added. One or more solo campaigns would be great, more factions, more narrative interaction between the factions or interactive narrative events and storylines. On the other hand, the game is not done yet and even once it was fully released, Northgard received several add-ons. So using that as a precedent. I am super optimistic about Dune Spice Wars, especially seeing how the early access version we got is a supremely playable game, even if there are some loading issues here and there that might cause some occasional staggering. That's optimization, it's gonna get ironed out by the time of full release. 
If you enjoyed this video, then by all means do me a sandworm sized favor and feed the maker by liking and commenting on it. If you want to see more of my dune related content, then also click on the playlist on screen. Checking out my Patreon page would also be deeply appreciated if you have Solaris to spend, Shai Hulud willing. I've been Steven Anson, thank you very much for watching, have a great rest of your day and fear is the mind killer.